Dr. Javier Cortez, thank you for being with us. So today you just presented the uh, final results or the, the, the main result for the SN03 study. Uh, could you walk us through the, uh, the, the results and uh, say a few words about what, what the clinician should uh, pay attention to regarding the results? Sure. First of all, thank you very much for this interview. More than happy to be with you all. Mm. So as you all know, um, metastatic triple negative breast cancer do have a very bad prognosis. In the first line setting, when our patients do not qualify for immune checkpoint inhibitors, the standard of care is chemotherapy. We have median progression free survival in the range of five to six months. Mm. So as you know also, Sretsumago Itikan has improved outcomes in second line or beyond. Mm. So we wanted to explore if SG was superior to chemotherapy in this first line metastatic triple negative breast cancer for those patients who did not qualify for immune checkpoint inhibitors. So the, 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 the randomized phase trial randomized patients to receive either SG or chemotherapy. Mm. Primary point was progression free survival by Vicura. And because SG has demonstrated a survival benefit in second line or beyond, we wanted to give the opportunity to all patients to receive SG beyond progression. Yeah. So for these patients, the control arm who did have progressive disease based on the Bicra, based on the independent review, mm. these patients were able to receive SG. Of course, this could modify the overall survival data, mm. but we wanted to offer to the patients the best treatment available currently. So I think this is, this is something yeah. very, very beautiful. And, and you said that uh, this uh, results, this could uh, represent the, 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 the most major breakthrough for these patients in 20 years. Sure, abs absolutely. Unfortunately, um, uh, patients, again, who do not qualify for immune checkpoint inhibitors, the median PFS as before is short, and we have not had treatments mm. which might have improved mm. this PFS in the first line setting. That's why we continue with chemotherapy. And that's why this study was so important. The primary point was met. Mm. The hazard ratio in favor of SG was 0.62, and the median PFS moved from 6.9 months with chemotherapy mm. to 9.7 months with SG, an absolute improvement, roughly a little bit less than three months. So something which is of clinical significance, in my opinion. So, so could you explain to us why are patients with triple negative breast cancer so vulnerable, uh, especially those who are PD-LN ne or PD-1 negative? Uh, why are they so vulnerable in, in terms of treatment options? Well, you know, unfortunately, this uh, triple negative breast cancer is a very heterogeneous disease. Mm. We do not have clear biomarkers in general. There are some small group of patients with germline mutations mm. that maybe the PARP inhibitors could help them a little bit, yeah. but these patients experience progressive disease very quickly. Mm. In the best of the cases, we are talking about 10 months now median PFS, even with the best data we have, which is coming from antibody drug conjugates in the setting. So again, maybe because of the biology, maybe because of the heterogeneity, maybe because of the lack of biomarkers to optimize, to give more targeted drugs, mm. the reality is that the patients did have very bad progress on free survival and very bad overall survival cancer. Mm. So struggle, as you said, it, they, it reduced the, the risk of disease progression with 38% in regard to chemotherapy. How would you describe the clinical significance of, uh, of this? Well, as I said before, I think that improving by almost three months the median PFS is, mm. is very relevant. Mm. Very, very relevant. Mm. This increasing, you said very nicely, by 38%, yeah. almost 40% the, 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 the time to, de to, to die or to, or, or to progressive disease. And that's, that's significant. I am very happy. No, we have to do all our best to try to cure this patient, but this is a great step. Exactly. That, uh, I think that uh, cancer in general is step by step, mm. but this is a big step. And again, in the last maybe 20 years or, ma or more, we have not have observed something of this magnitude. The overall survival data is not mature yet. How does the, the progressive free survival data, uh, how they, they bear this study without being uh, uh, significantly uh, positive on OS? Well, I think that first of all, the attrition rate, the attrition rate means that many patients will be unable to receive a subsequent line of therapy. Second point, is for those patients in the control arm who received second line treatment, 82% mm. of them received SG. So this could, of course, modify the overall survival advantage mm. that SG could provide compared with chemotherapy. Nevertheless, the study wanted to optimize the patient journey for, for all of them. Mm. Third, as you said very nicely, 
is immature at this time, but we export PFS2, mm. which in some way might be a signal of what will happen in terms of overall survival. Mm. And PFS was nicely uh, uh, increased with HG compared with chemotherapy. The medium was 14 months mm. with chemotherapy, 18.2 months mm. with HG. Absolute improvement, 4.2 months, hazard ratio 0.70. Okay. So I think it's a good signal to maybe Oh, uh, that, that name will translate into a survival benefit in the future. Yeah. Do you think Trotolo could uh, uh, replace the chemotherapy uh, altogether? So I'm sure that mm -hmm. antibody drug conjugates against top 2 will replace mm -hmm. chemotherapy. Mm -hmm. And AG is one of them. And for sure, mm -hmm. I think these are good options for, for these patients to be considered clearly now in the second line or beyond. Mm -hmm. Tomorrow, when this uh, uh, strategy will be approved by the agency, by the authorities, I think this could be this could be a very good option for the first line setting. Could could you say something will be about the side effects? They they were in general very terrible, I think. Yeah. Sure, sure. So first of all, toxicity is very well known yeah. by SG. Again, SG has been approved in triple negative breast cancer treated patients and ER positive. So it, is, it is very very well known. The most important investments are neutropenia mm. and diarrhea. Grade three or four neutropenia in the range of 43%, mm. diarrhea, grade three, grade four, in the range of 9%. Mm. Unfortunately, we have six patients who died as a consequence of the treatment, yeah. all of them because of infections. And in five of these six patients, we had neutropenia. These patients did have risk factors to increase the risk of neutropenia. And today, the guidelines recommend to use prophylactic treatment with GCSF with growth factors. Mm. Unfortunately, at that time in the trial, that was not mandatory. Yeah. And none of these patients received primary prophylaxis. Mm. So in my opinion, I think that if we follow the guidelines that we re recommend today using these drugs, maybe, maybe in the future, the patients who do have severe neutropenia and potentially grade five events will be much lower. So, so you have been deeply involved in research on triple ne negative breast cancer in a lot of years, uh, and you have had a, a very interesting result in several studies, but what does these results personally mean for you? Well, you know, it's like, in Spanish we say agridulce, which is like bad and good. Yeah. I think it's very good to see that we have improved outcomes. Yeah. But we should not forget about human beings, about mothers, sisters, daughters, medium PFS today in the range of 10 months, much better than before, by 10 months. Yeah. I don't know the median over survival, maybe in the final we'll see something in the range of a couple of years or so, but these patients die. Yeah. So I would like to encourage the pharma, the biotechs, and all the society yeah. to continue investing money, doing all the research as much as possible, because we have, I don't know if we will be able to cure these patients, but at least we have to give them the opportunity to die, not as a, conse as a consequence of the disease, mm -hmm. but maybe with the disease. Xavier Cortez, thank you for taking the time. Thanks to you, and very happy to be here. Thank you. Thank you.